Hey everybody, welcome back to Doom. Alright, so, after the first session, I've noticed that my audio is a little bit high, and the game seems a lot more quiet than I am, so I up that slightly a bit. I've also upped the bitrate a little bit more. Frankly, I was just glad to... I had a lot of problems getting the first set going, but I'm glad it's going now. Olivia Pierce, the cult leader of the UAC, is trying to open a gateway into their dimension. She wants to help bring about the end of this world, another lost soul fallen under Hell's control. Olivia has outclocked the Argent Tower, using it to drill a hole into the Hellscape and let Hell's army through. You need to shut down the Argent Tower before it breaks through to into their world by disabling the energy filters located throughout the surface complex. Alrighty. The beginning of the end. Olivia is using the tower to drill a doorway into their world. You can prevent her from opening the gate by disabling the tower induction filters. Alright. So what do we got? Challenges. Walk the path. Interact with a rune trial stone. Bird's eye view. Acquire the auto map for the Argent facility. To be knighted. Perform two death from above glory kills on hell knights. There are two rune trials, whatever the fuck those are. Two field drones, one Argent cell, and four armor upgrades. Presently we have three armor upgrades. Which... Frankly, I think I'm going to max out area scan. Full view. Exploration items appear on the auto map automatically. Okay. And then we have two upgrades for these. Micro missiles has been mastered. Now let's save up and see what we get. Oh, okay, so we hadn't found the plasma rifle already, we would have gotten it here. Untethered cross-dimensional activity is a frequent occurrence outside of the base, so it is recommended that workers buddy up when journeying onto the Martian surface. Oh, okay, I see. So there's a rune trial over there. Saw the little doodads pop up. S that helps. Alrighty. Is there any... There's a thing over here. There's five secrets. Stop moving, you bastard. I saw two imps over there as well. Alright, so we have fuel for the chainsaw here. By the way, did upper... Ah, okay. So upping the ammo capacity did give us an extra fuel unit, although we can't kill really large demons because it goes in uh, one, threes, and fives. Although it seems we need to jump down below. Maybe? Well, I'll say no to this. Okay, I think I see what those little spots are over there.
Aha. Is there a monster down there? Oh no, it's you. Bitch. Ah, uh, the good old days when games had fucking unrealistic physics. And you could moon jump all the. Ooh. So. Rune Trial. Use a combat shotgun to eliminate 15 imps before the timer expires. Bonus 2 seconds per kill, 4 seconds per glory kill. Available reward. Vacuum. Increases range in which you can absorb dropped items. Oh! Nifty. Nifty. So we got to like little... Alright. So, is that just a permanent upgrade? Like, do I just hoover up things from a larger radius now? Or is that just like a new power up being unlocked? That may possibly spawn. I hope it's a permanent upgrade. A gift from beyond. The runes tab is where you can view available runes and equip them. You can also view progress towards upgrading any runes you've acquired, as well as the requirement for unlocking additional rune slots. Really? Complete four or seven rune trials. Oh! Further absorb 300 dropped items. So what are these other ones? Increases how long the area is staggered. Increases the value of ammunition received from demons and items. Increases effectiveness of equipment. Launch a glory kill from much further away. Perform glory kills faster. Provides significant increase in, in control over inner movement after a double jump. Glory killing demons drops armor. Move faster for a short time after performing a glory kill. Demons become more glory kill friendly due to a high damage resistance when staggered. Firing your standard weapons will not cost ammunition when you have 100 armor or more. One chance to survive a death blow and recover health. This resets on death. Interesting. Neat. Ah, there's a, uh, is that the, that's the drone. So I'm guessing he's in that walkway up there.
So is it. Oh boy. Okay, well, you know, I said I was going to read the data things after I'd gotten done with that first session. I think mm, now's a good time to start. Uh, let's clear out this stuff. What's that letting me go down? Artifacts. Berserk. Test subjects exposed to the sphere exhibit extreme rage and increased strength. It's been noted that subjects given the Berserk Sphere will vent their rage on any living creature they can find, and will even self-harm if they have no outlet for their fury. In the extremely rare case the subject survives exposure, they will be left in a perpetual state of delirium and should be exterminated. The Praetor Suit. Additional relics were found at the tomb alongside the Doom Marine. Some incantation tablets, an ancient combat suit, which was given the name the Praetor Suit. When found, it was encased in an inscribed stone tomb. The suit was extracted from the rock, cleaned, and subjected to numerous tolerance tests, and found to be almost impervious to any damage. It appeared to have some mechanical function as well. Small receptors in the gloves and chest plate that attracted argent plasma and dissipated it through capillary tubes in the substructure. Markings on the armor were also consistent with images of a man, or humanoid, seen in several of the tablets and stones found on other expeditions. The same markings were also noted on the helix stone. Despite it being clear that the suit can be activated in some way, no method has been found to do it. It appears to be missing a component, likely the Doom Marine himself. Uh, environments. The UAC. Despite the discovery of liquid water on Mars in the early 21st century, the colonization of Mars had little appeal beyond exploration for the next century. Hang on, it's doing that thing. Well, let me scroll. There we go. With the discovery of the Argent Fracture, a transdimensional stream of unrefined Argent Plasma, in 2095, settling and mining Mars became both practical and essential to meeting the vast energy demands of Earth. However, the need for atmospheric conversion and terraforming of the Red Planet was a task that seemed insurmountable to all but one corporation, the UAC. Through their diligent dedication to technological advancement, forward thinking, an outpost was established in MTC 2096 to extract argent plasma from the fracture. When this plasma is subjected to UAC's fermionic transference pattern, argent energy is produced. This remarkable venture eventually bore fruit as argent Energy became the primary power source for all of Earth. New visitors to the UAC facility may take for granted the rich atmosphere while on the surface, but it should be remembered that just a few short decades ago, Mars was an inhospitable desert that could support no life. Unauthorized exploration into the exclusion zones outside the base is not allowed under any circumstance. Highly volatile experiments and artifacts are frequently researched a safe distance away from the base, and your safety in these areas cannot be guaranteed. Unless you like getting your asshole eaten out by demons. Welcome to Mars. New advocates. Welcome to the UAC. This guidebook will serve as your personal guide to fitting in at the Argent facility on Mars. Your devotion to the UAC's mission is the foundation on which we achieve the establishment of a new paradigm to move humanity forward into the future. Tier 1 advocates may take some time to adjust to a life on Mars, but with faith and dedication, you can look forward to a long and fruitful career as you work towards full induction. Your transition to Tier 2 status will be judged upon your actions here. Make a good impression, new advocate. This guide will update automatically as you access new areas of the facility. Expect more helpful hints in, into the UAC way of life, and as we say here on Mars, power from the people. Namely, your sacrifice. The Resource Operations Center, referred to as ResOps, was one of the first facilities constructed at the Mars base after the discovery of, Argent, of the Argent Fracture. 
It encompasses several key areas needed to run the facility, including plasma extraction and processing, isotope stabilization, heavy metal and ore mining, artifact analysis, communications networking, and off-world transportation. New UAC employees posted to the Mars facility are expected to fulfill a tour of duty in ResOps before moving on to their specialized career bracket. Security Clearance Level 1 allows access to all areas of ResOps, including the, excluding the Vega network hubs and some satellite control centers. For access to these locations, new advocates must submit a Delta Q Delta form to the de Departmental Enforcer. And in that vision, they saw the future, bold and powerful, and that the many worked as one to bring the new order. What better words to inspire you as you set off initiating yourself into the UAC? Those who came before you and those who serve with all operate with the same goal in mind, the development of a new dawn for mankind. It is by this principle of teamwork that we will evaluate, uh, evaluate, elevate ourselves to the next plane of existence, as demon sandwiches. If you have any new suggestions to improve the work environment while working in your tenure in ResOps, please submit this suggestion in WAD E1M4 to your command controller. However, it is imperative that you learn to accept the things that you can't change and follow the path that has been laid out for you. Your service in ResOp is a test of your devotion to the cause. Should you be asked to submit yourself to an interrogation program or experimental treatment, you are expected to comply without question. If a fellow advocate asks you to, enga enga yeah. asks you to engage in a dedication ceremony, say yes. If you see an advocate doubting their role at the UAC, bring it to the intention of an enforcer so they might receive the help they need. Don't be selfish. Tier 2 is for everybody. Everybody wants to be ass raped by demons. Foundry. The Foundry, an extension wing of resource operations, the first Mars outpost, processes all the heavy elements mined from the outlying Martian landscape and from around the original location of the Argent Fracture. Refining argent plasma requires a large amount of transitional metals and noble gases, so a central location that can be systematically cleansed and decontaminated is required to keep argent energy production at maximum efficiency. As such, this area is considered a high-risk area, and all UAC employees are subject to regular med checks to ensure their production capabilities are not degraded by the environment. Industrial accident-related deaths in the foundry dropped dramatically in MTC 2146 thanks to the implementation of new UAC safety protocols where employees exposed to dangerous materials are immediately sent to the Lazarus Labs for, for cleansing, re-education, and where pro possible, reintegration. As a result of this protocol, officially reported deaths have dropped to negligible amounts. Oops. <coughs> Foundry Team Manifest. Congratulations, new advocate! If you are reading this message, you've been promoted to the Foundry Resource Team. If you are volunteering for this service, you're joining an elite band of Tier 1 advocates whose work and dedication keeps our mission running on all cylinders. As a member of Foundry Resources, you will have access to some of the most advanced equipment the UAC has to offer, including grip ton cargo handlers, Delta 5 jump boots, and dinophasic elevators. New members might want to consider applying for an exclusive Team Tattoo upon joining as a sign of faith to our, in our science. Team Tattoos are a mark of your tireless work on the UAC and can be requested by signing up for any of the Lazarus Wave case studies. Please contact a Tier 3 Advanced Weapon Retechnician to fill in your application for a Pentagram brand today. That's not suspicious at all! Exterior Opportunities at times, Tier 1 and Tier 2 advocates will be asked to perform dangerous duties that include exterior work. This work may be put before you as punishment for not meeting your quota or because you are the best person to complete the job. In either case, new advocates should approach the work with the same focus and commitment as any other task. Should you experience any interdimensional encounters, you are advised to report the event to a Tier 3 Lazarus Project scientist in your departmental or your departmental enforcer. You are advised to not approach any non-human entities without executive supervision. Yeah. Oh, look, it's an imp. I just want to pet it. Ugh. Need a drink real quick. <clears throat> Gotta catch up on all this stuff. Ah, the database. Health station. 
The UAC Health Station follows the same standard design specification as its predecessor, predecessor, yeah, predecessor, the Health Pack, but with improved nanobot dispersal and faster cellular analysis. When a patient's arm is inserted into the administration sleeve, the health station initiates a microscopic atomic force scan on the subject and administers a nanobot package that targets cell cellular deficiencies. Chem clusters are then, do are then dosed to the patient, which stimulates rapid recovery. Some users experience lightheadedness when using a health station. This can be cured by reinserting the patient's arm into the machine and running it a second time. This step can be repeated as often as necessary. <laughs> Field drone. Often referred to as droppers, these drones are developed with UAC to autonomously receive and deliver ordered parts to engineers, off-duty employees, and soldiers. Argent Energy. Wait, are there any more? Okay. Early in the development of, Ar of the Argent, yeah, Argent Accumulator, it was discovered that Argent Plasma, compressed into Hayden radius spheres, named after Samuel Hayden, <coughs> would retain its structure when charged with enough radioactive isotopes. Once formed, if the surface tension of the plasma sphere is broken and the energy cache contained within will quickly discharge, energizing anything that comes into contact with it. The <coughs> Argent caches were the forerunner of the Argent accumulator, but their vulnerability to blunt force makes their use too unpredictable. There are still hundreds of these prototype Argent caches to be found around the Argent facility, and have become somewhat a collector's item along with among UA UAC employees. Elite Guard The Elite Guard is a company of security personnel charged with protecting the Lazarus Project, research, and, and maintaining order throughout the Argent facility. Their distinct red uniforms help distill a calming influence among UAC employees, and they are known to be level-headed, disciplined, and fair but firm. Their suits contain cybernetic augmentations, which give the elite guards an advantage should they need to quell any disturbances. The augmentations allow them to be faster, stronger, and more resilient to injury. Gore Nests Studies of demons upon entering this dimension have shown their conduct is not purely vindictive. There is a method behind their actions. When a demon captures their prey, the fresh kill is taken to a temporary ceremonial site where arcane rituals are performed on the pile of blood and gore. When enough corpses have been gathered, the ceremonial site becomes a gore nest. These sites, imbued with hell energy from the rituals, act as an umbilical cord to hell. Extreme caution must be taken when approaching a gore nest. Attacking the nest, or indeed any demons within close proximity to the nest, will act as an alarm and siphon more demons from hell. <coughs> I.e., start an arena. <laughs> UAC Personnel Samuel Hayden Samuel Hayden is the chairman of the UAC. Born into the wealthy and powerful Hayden family, his he completed his Master's of Theoretical Physics at Oxford University. He showed prodigious talent in several fields, including thermodynamics, electromagnetic theory, and nuclear sciences. At a young age, he established the Samuel Hayden Foundation, a philanthropic organization dedicated to sponsoring young scientific talent and funding scientific programs in schools and colleges. His daunting intellect made him a prime target for the UAC, and they recruited him soon after he was recruited him soon after he was appointed general director of the Global Science Council. Samuel took over leadership of the UAC a few months after the discovery of the Argent fracture and immediately put the Argent Tower into production. During construction of the Argent Tower, Samuel was diagnosed with stage four inoperable brain cancer. Sim Samuel was given six months to live. He dedicated those last few months to finding a radical solution to his mortality, cybernetic transference. Ah, uh, Vega-1. Running the Argent facility takes a lot of power. Not just electrical and mechanical power, but computational power. With so many interdependent systems feeding off a single power source, the UAC decided it would need to create a central mainframe computer to manage not only the flow of Argent energy, but the day-to-day -day operations of a facility with over 60,000 employees. This megacomputer, the brainchild of Samuel Hayden, head of the UAC, would exceed the computational ability of any system before it, and more importantly, would be recognized as the first truly autonomous artificial intelligence entity. They named it Vega. Weapons. Oh, hey, wait, there's still some more. Wait. Eh. 
Okay. <clears throat> Chainsaw. There have been reports of this item being seen in the Argent facility, though there are no known uses for it. Security personnel have been made aware of the item and has likely been smuggled onto Mars. It has been and has been directed to confiscate it immediately. As there are no practical uses for it, it must be assumed that this item should be considered a black market enthusiast's weapon. Heavy Assault Rifle Although recently superseded by the plasma rifle as the UAC's standard issue weapon, the heavy assault rifle is still in widespread use due to its dependable mechanical firing system, high accuracy at long range, and abundant supply of ammunition. The weapon is effective at all engagement distances and is best used against a solitary target unless a micro-missile modification is present. The standard issue ammunition is a 50 caliber full metal jacket round. <laughs> Micro-missiles a multi-chambered cylinder located under the primary barrel can be loaded with up to six HMX missiles. These small but deadly rockets were designed to deliver multiple payloads to a single target, but can be used to subdue multiple targets in a tight kill zone. Missiles will detonate shortly after making contact with any surface. Pistol Every UAC employee is provided a standard UAC energy matter gel sidearm upon promotion to Tier 2 and above. This sidearm is reliable and effective at short ranges. A, a gravity geared dynamo in the, shot in the stock charges a capacitor whenever the operator moves. When the weapon is fired, the capacitor compresses up to 4 megawatts of argent energy into a hardened plasma gel and launches the slug at high velocity. The gel slug has the same impact properties of conventional ammunition, making the weapon act and feel like a standard ballistic sidearm. The weapon is constructed of thermally diffusive metal alloys, which allow it to discharge rapidly and repeatedly without overheating or compromising the accuracy. The capacitor and the EMG can also be upgraded to concentrate the energy into one large pulse before st st nah, for more stopping power. Plasma Rifle The plasma rifle has become standard issue among military units with the advent of argent-powered electromagnetic accelerators. Based off of the... HIPGD designed the early 21st century. This weapon delivers a rapid salvo of plasmoids and inflict both impact and thermal damage to the target. Rocket launcher, we just got this. This weapon has seen little design modification since its development in the late 21st century. It is a standard issue to heavy weapon specialists in all military forces due to its unparalleled direct impact and blast radius. The UAC improved the design shortly or slightly by adding an automated quick reload. The weapon casing has been retrofitted to accept UAC developed modifications. <laughs> Combat Shotgun The UAC shotgun disperses a spread of high velocity buckshot for maximum impact against enemies, ideally suited for the operative who requires a speedy response for deadly close encounters. The wide coverage of this weapon loses impact at long range, the weapon is forged from high-quality titanium steel to, alert, to ensure maximum reliability, repeat rate, and yield strength. Explosive Shot This shotgun ammunition incorporates a glycerin fuse that detonates an octanitrocubane gel upon impact. Embedded shot is dispersed at the point of impact, creating a wide area of effect. Highly effective against multiple targets or when detonated near the rear of enemies and Defil nah, defilade? Or whatever. Charged Burst. An Argent Charge Compression Reloader allows the operator to automatically fire up to three rounds in rapid succession. With the enemy at close range, this action is devastating, taking down all the most resilient of adversaries. The Compression Reloader requires several seconds to recompress after use. And our Frag Grenade. The design of this weapon is conventional in nature, though it has been refined to perform at the limit of its basic ballistic capabilities. The UAC Fragmentation Grenade uses a Comp D explosive package to encase in a steel alloy shell. It has an effective fatality radius of about 5 meters. Improvements in the antiquated M67 Grenade include more reliable chemical fuse mechanism, interior machining of the casing to provide more efficient projectile dispersion, and a trigger switch safety click to prevent unwanted activation. The newer Comp D explosive also ensures that the radial pressure wave has no drop spots, ensuring full damage potential within the fatality zone. <coughs> mm. All right. And the Monstars. Hell Knight. Hell Knight One. 
The Hell Knight is a towering brute bred for combat deep in the bowels of Hell. These diabolical beasts are prized gladiators of the Demon Horde. They relentlessly stomp towards their targets, smashing their massive fists into the ground to create shockwaves that stagger their opponents and leave them vulnerable to a bone-crushing melee attack. The Hell Knight's powerful legs allow it to leap across large distances effortlessly, quickly closing the gap on its enemies. Imp. Oh, hey, I got two entries for these fuckers. These ferocious and agile demons are found all over Hell, and are often used in the front line in a concerted attack in either dimension. They revel in battle, feeding off their victims when the hunger takes them. Imp 2. Despite their low status among the demon ranks and their seemingly endless numbers, imps have unique characteristics in battle. Some prefer fighting from, fighting from an elevated position, while others will rush their target and swipe at them with razor-sharp claws. Walls and obstacles offer no defense against imps as they will leap great heights and easily hang from surfaces. The imp is capable of channeling hell energy through its hands and shaping it into a projectile. As the imp channels the energy, airborne particles and debris are sucked into the maelstrom to create a condensed, superheated fireball. The mechanics of the imp's range attack suggest that they are actually a lower, for lower form of the summoner. Possess Soldier! While the Lazarus Wave exposure does effectively wipe any vestige of human behavior from most of its victims, some subjects continue to display tactical cognizance posthumously. As with possessed engineers, it does not appear to be random. If an individual has training in combat as part of the UAC military, the Lazarus Wave event will transform them into more than mere slaves. This anomaly further supports the theory that there is some form of genetic coding embedded within the Lazarus Wave particles, which governs the outcome of the Lazarus Wave exposure on a per-case basis. The Possessed The Possessed are created in a Lazarus Wave event, a phenomenon first discovered by Dr. Olivia Pierce during her Lazarus project. While most victims exposed to Argent bio waves will expire without further effect, some subjects will absorb traces of Argent energy and enter a state of posthumous vigor. Despite necrosis of the internal organs, with the exception of the brain, the victim continues to animate and exhibit low-order sentience for weeks or even months after clinical death. Posthumous brain activity in the possessed is limited to instinctual, instinctive behavior. The possessed are known to be territorial when confronted by the living. When isolated, they will often enter a dormant state for extended periods of time. They will stand unmoving for days or weeks at a time until presented with a live food source or threatened by a predator. An interesting behavior has been seen when the possessed are held in small groups. They'll drag human corpses to a central location within their holding pens and then perform a silent ritual around the pile of bodies. The resulting ceremonial site appears to be the initial stages of a gore nest. These actions must be driven by telepathic communication with higher ranking demons, as there is no local brain activity that can manage such choices. Possessed will perform these tasks even when their limbs are removed or Pavlonian pain responders are implanted in their cortex. Further cementing the theory that they are unwilling slaves performing an integral part of the life cycle of the demons. The possessed create the birthing grounds for new demons, and upon expiration are themselves used as fertilizer for a gore nest. Possessed Engineer During a Lazarus Wave event, victims undergo dramatic changes to their physiology both internally and externally. Aside from fundamentally changing the composition with their own of their internal organs, the high-density plasma wave is strong enough to fuse metal to skin. In many cases, personal items such as watches and jewelry can burn through the skin and become permanently embedded in the victim. Perhaps the most unfortunate victims are of this fusing event are any subjects that happen to be working with acetylene tanks or, or welding equipment, as the equipment is often attached to the body to allow for mobile work in low-gravity environments. The Lazarus Wave will create a demonized human with a highly combustible explosive device embedded in its skin. As with all possessed creatures, they are mindless and driven through some form of tele telepathic communication from an unknown demon overseer. Additional care must be taken when confronting a possessed engineer. If the fuel tank is punctured and it doesn't explode, the weakened container can turn the possessed engineer into an explosive projectile. This is a danger to anyone, any being nearby, both human and demon. <coughs> Hellraiser The Hellraiser is an astute and tactical foe that will engage enemies at it from a distance with a powerful beam of unrefined hell energy. 
The beam emanates from an arm-like protrusion composed of cartilage and other osseous tissue. Articulation of the cartilage allows the Hellraiser to focus its energy beam into a single charged shot that will obliterate anything that stands in its way. Possess Security Possess Security units exhibit the most complex battle strategy of all possessed humans, including a mobile shield advance towards the enemy while firing in defilade. Ah, uh, fuck, fuck. Don't know every word. Possess Security will also drop their shields and adopt a more accurate firing stance at the cost of lowering their defense. Whoo! So. I, like I said, going. Eh. Well, let me go down there. Okay, that took a lot longer than I expected. So. But I said I was going to catch up on the database entries. Um. So, I'll catch you next time. Be right back.